Oh, yeah. Man, if you've ever been to a Packer game and you've heard that play over the loudspeakers when everybody's packed in the in the, in the the house, man, it's a good feeling. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the Packers. No, I'm just kidding. We're not talking about the Packers. Let's get real here. We're talking about proving theorems about parallel lines and also using properties of parallel lines to find angle measures. So parallel lines, that's our thing for today. Parallel lines. Our two goals are listed right here, as I just mentioned. And this is section three. Two. So let's jump right in. Um, we're going to start off with three theorems. These maybe are things that you've already you, you've known before. Maybe you can kind of make a guess. Um, but they're going to be based off of the different angle pairs that we talked about last time. So the first one is theorem 3-1. It says, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you recall... We got a transversal cutting through two lines, um, like right here. Here's a transversal. Then alternate interior angles would be like three and five or four and six. So based on this theorem, we can conclude that um, angle three is congruent to angle five, and angle four is congruent to angle six. So alternate interior angles are going to be congruent uh, when we have parallel lines. But it has to be parallel lines. I'm going to underline that just so that you remember that's the important part, two, uh, two parallel lines. All right, next theorem. Theorem 3.2 is the corresponding angles theorem. Same idea. It says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, so we're still doing, dealing with parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. So examples in this in this picture here, we could say angle one is congruent to angle five. You could say angle two is congruent to angle six. Uh, angle three would be congruent to angle seven, and angle four is congruent to angle eight. Those are all corresponding because they're in the same spot, for instance, 2 and 6, uh, just in two different intersections that are formed by the transversal. But in this case, again, it has to be parallel lines for this to work. All right, another one, just very similar to the first one, only this is dealing with alternate exterior angles. It's called the alternate exterior angle theorem. And this says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, again, then the alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So like in this case, angle 1 and angle 7 would be congruent. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 8. All right. I believe that's our last theorem for right now. But we're going to also add – oh, let's, let's practice those a little bit here. Got a couple examples here. Um this example to the right, I want you to notice that there's four different lines going on here. But the only thing we know that's parallel is angles or er, uh, lines P and Q, it says, are parallel. It also says angle 1 is 170, 107 degrees. We'll label that right there, 107 degrees. Measure of angle 11 is 48 degrees. Based off of that information, we should be able to find essentially all the rest of the angle measures. Specifically, it says one, two, uh, we want to find three, five, 13, nine, 15, and 17. So if you'd like, I'd like you to you pause and try that. Based on those three theorems and anything else you know about um, maybe vertical angles or linear pairs, can you find those missing angle measures? All right, uh, we need to find angle three. Well, angle three, if you look here, is in the corresponding part to angle one, so that would also be 107 degrees. Number two says angle five. Well, angle five is across from angle three. Those are vertical angles, and vertical angles are always congruent. So that's also 107 degrees. Let's try the measure of angle 13. Well, that is not going to be the same as the measure of angle 5. Even though they're corresponding angles, the two lines that are formed, this one and this one, are not parallel. So that wouldn't work. 
However, we can use the fact that angles 11 and angle 13 are vertical angles. So angle 13 would have the measure of 48 degrees as well. Number four, the measure of angle nine. Now, number nine, that would be alternate exterior angles with the measure of angle 13 or be corresponding with 11. So either way, it's going to be 48 degrees as well. Number five, the measure of angle 15. So 48 degrees. Measure of angle 15, that's corresponding angle to angle 13. So that's also 48 degrees. And then the measure of angle 17. Now that one is not in any intersection that would go with any parallel lines. So I'm going to say, take a look at our triangle. We have one angle in there that's 48 degrees. We have a measure of angle 8, which if I wanted to find the measure of angle 8, I know that 1 and 8 would make 180, so 180 minus 107, because those are uh, a linear pair. So 73 degrees, so the measure of angle 8 is 73 degrees. And then all three of those angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I take my 180 inside of that triangle, and I say I want 180 minus 73 and also minus 48. So basically you're subtracting... Um, Well, 180 minus 173 would be 107. Minus 48. But you could add up 73 and 48 and subtract them from 180. So I get 9, so 59 degrees. So the measuring of 17 is 59 degrees. And then again, that's just using a lot of the angle things that we know. Now, numbers one and two here both use a, uh, parallel lines A and B. So A and B are parallel there, they're parallel here, which means any of those theorems could, could take place if we have corresponding angles, alternate interior or alternate exterior. But based off of that for number one, we do have – two alternate interior angles that are labeled. So 5x plus 3 would equal 63. So you can solve that for x by subtracting 3 first on both sides. And then dividing by 5. So x equals 12. Um, now number 2, those are not alternate interior. They're not corresponding, but they look to be alternate exterior, which are also grew it to each other. So we could say 2x plus 27 would be equal to 3x minus 27. So I'll subtract 2x on both sides. I could also add 27 to get rid of this one. Add 27 here. 54 equals x or 1x. So there you go. There's another application of those theorems. Now we've got another one that's technically a postulate. goes along with the same idea. It's postulate 3, 1, and that is the same side interior angles postulate. So that says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines again, then same side interior angles, for instance, like 4 and 5 or 3 and 6 in this case, are supplementary. So if I would take this angle and I would bump it right up against angle 4, I could find that they make a line together. So they are supplementary to each other. So I could say my, my conclusion would be that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 would add up to 180 degrees. You could also say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 
but also add up to 180 degrees. So those are same side interior angles when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. All right, let's apply that. Um, first example, we need to find X, Y, and Z. So let's see if we can use any of the things we just learned. And we have two sets of parallel lines. So one thing I see for X right away is these are both alternate interior. So that means 2X equals 72. So if I divide by 2, I get X is 36. So there's a quick one. Now it might help to know that... Um, if x is 36, then 2x would be 72. So this angle is 72 degrees as well, which might help me find z. Because those are, all those are same side interior angles. So 4z plus 72 has to equal 180. And then I can solve for Z. For Z equals 108 divided by 4 divided by 4. Z equals, I believe it's 27. So we have Z, which then we can say that this is. 4 times that, which is 108. Not that it matters, because actually, if you look at our last one for y, this is an alternate exterior angle with 72. So we could say 5y plus 2 uh, equals 72. Subtract 2, 5, 5y equals 70. Divide by 5, I believe you get 14. Or why? And there you go. All right, last thing I want to do here is touch on a couple of proofs. So a couple of different things we can prove using these. And I'm going to do one example here. I'd like you to try the other one on your own. This one is a proof uh, where we're given line L and M are parallel and line P and Q are also parallel. So we have two sets of parallel lines we can't always assume that, but in this case, we're given that. So these are parallel to these. All right, so always, always, always start with the given. Line L is parallel to line M, and line P is parallel to line Q. That is given. Always should be the easiest step, right? Now, from there, we're trying to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 6, even though those are not alternate exterior angles. Even though they look like they're on the exterior, all alternate sides, but there's no transversal that connects the two, so they're not considered alternate exterior angles. So let's do a little work to get there. We want to use angle 1, because we know we have to prove something about angle 1. So let's say something about angle 1. Let's say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. 3 or 4, really. 3 would be corresponding angles. 4 would be alternate exterior angles. So I'm going to go with 4 because I thought of that first. That would be the alternate exterior angles theorem. Now, for the sake of numbers, if you'd rather write theorem... 3, 3, you could do that. Or you can just write the alternate exterior angles theorem because that's easier to remember. Let's continue. Number 3. We know that 1 is congruent to 4. Now, 4 is also congruent to 6, right? Because those are corresponding. And we're trying to get 6 involved here. So angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. Those would be corresponding angles theorem. I'm abbreviating here. THM for theorem. Now, based on that, I can always I can already say that angle one is congruent to angle six. How? Well, it's because it's not because of substitution. There is no substitution with congruence, but there is the transitive property of congruence. There we go. So I know there's a closing question and an error analysis in this problem, but what I'd like you to try on your own is 
this proof right here. It does not have to be a paragraph proof. You can write it as a two column proof and then if you want to write it as a paragraph proof, you can. But I just want to I want to see a proof trying to prove in this case that angle one and three are supplementary. All right. And that's what I'm going to leave you with today. This is lesson three two on proving theorems about parallel lines and also using properties to find angle measures dealing with parallel lines. So have an awesome, awesome, awesome rest of your day. Go Pack Go!